I just copied an $800,000 a month app without writing a single line of code. And today I'm going to show you exactly how I used AI to reverse engineer and recreate Livin, an app from the app store that's making $800,000 every single month. And you can literally have your own version running on your phone in the next 15 minutes. Most people think you need years of coding experience or a whole team of developers to build apps, but I'm about to prove that completely wrong. Here's what nobody's telling you. While everyone's debating whether AI will replace programmers, oh no, smart creators are already using AI to build million dollar apps from their bedrooms or offices. You can now build with AI without coding, get the app on your phone in one minute, and build complex features with a single prompt. The barrier to entry has completely disappeared. I discovered the only AI tool that makes building an iPhone app possible. So no coding, no development team, no technical background required. This is the same tool that's quietly revolutionizing how apps get built. And by the end of this video, you and I, we're going to have our own app live on our phone. I'm going to break down the entire process step by step, how I analyze Livin's $800,000 success, how I fed the right prompts to the AI, and how you can copy this exact system to build any app that you want. Plus, I'll reveal the one AI tool that makes this all possible. And it's probably not what you think. The AI tool that allows you to build iPhone and Android apps is Rourke. I added a link in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. Okay, so if you've ever wanted to build a wellness app like Livin, here's how to do it from scratch using just Rourke and Supabase. With Rourke, you don't need to write any code. You just describe what you want and it builds the app for you in minutes. It's an AI powered platform that makes the whole process fast and surprisingly simple. So let's start by building a mood tracker that feels intuitive and genuinely useful. We want users to either select how they're feeling or type in their own emotion, then store that data and visualize it over time. So let's tell the AI create a mood tracker that lets users select or type how they're feeling show a history of emotional states over time using a line or bubble chart, store moods per day in Supabase. Now Rourke generates a dynamic mood tracking interface. Our users can now pick from predefined emotions like happy, anxious, or motivated, or write their own custom labels. Every time a mood is submitted, it's saved under the user's profile with a timestamp. We also get a visual chart that maps emotional trends over time. It updates as new moods are logged in and helps our users spot patterns across days, weeks, or even months. Now, each point is interactive and color coded, so it's easier to reflect on emotional shifts and triggers. Important disclaimer, building apps and making money online is not easy, despite what other YouTubers are saying. So when I show you how to build an app, I'm demonstrating the technical process and the potential. I am not generating your results. These AI tools are legit and the techniques do work, but success depends on your execution, timing, and honestly, some luck. Most apps don't make money immediately and many don't make money at all. So I'm not promising that you'll get rich or that you quit your job. This is not financial advice or a get rich quick scheme. I'm just showing you what's possible with these tools. What you do with that knowledge, well, it's entirely up to you. So, all right, with expectations set, let's go ahead and continue building the app. Now, at one point, the chart fails to update automatically, but Roar catches it and flags the issue. It even offers a fix using the built-in Send to AI feature, which automatically suggests a patch based on the problem. So we'll go ahead and apply it, and just like that, the display logic is fixed in one step. After tracking emotions, our users need something that connects the dots, a way to make sense of what they're feeling. So let's give them quick psychology-backed lessons that explain what's happening behind the scenes one idea at a time. So let's tell the AI, add a section with psychology-based educational cards. Each course module should have a title, short explanation, and a read more button to expand. Use engaging illustrations or emojis to keep it friendly. 
And from here, a set of colorful card style modules are generated. Each one shows a short title and a quick summary. When users tap read more, the full lesson opens up in sections, often paired with emojis or simple illustrations to keep things light and engaging. The lessons are also built around key psychology topics like how the brain handles fear or the role of dopamine or cognitive overload. The interface encourages users to focus on one concept at a time and every course they start gets saved to a progress list so that they can jump back to it anytime. But you know, some users might not feel like having to dig into full lessons and that's totally okay. And that's why I think a quick emotional wellness quiz can give them a fast way to check how they're doing. There's no overthinking required. So let's tell the AI, add a quiz page that starts by asking for the user's gender and age, then show five questions that assess emotional well-being with sliders or emotional scale responses. Return a summary at the end based on score range. And after that, Rourke builds a smooth quiz flow that starts by asking for basic information, age and gender, then moves into five quick questions. The answer options show up as sliders, emoji ratings or icon based scales covering things like energy levels, optimism, irritability and social motivation. Based on their total score, the system returns a summary labeled as either low stress, mild stress or high stress. That result gets logged in Supabase and will influence other parts of the app, like which activities or soundscapes that get suggested to them. All right, so far, so good. We're doing all right. But before moving forward, we do need to see how the app actually feels in context. So we're going to open it on a mobile device using Expo Go. Scanning the QR code pulls it up instantly, letting us test the app on a real phone without any complicated setups involved. This instant testing capability makes the whole process feel less like setup and more like real use. The first impression is quiet but confident, nothing flashy, just clean transitions, readable text, and a layout that doesn't try too hard. And it's easy to find each section without second guessing where to tap. So we'll start with the mood tracker. Recording a few entries feels quick and frictionless, and the graph updates right away. It's not just functional, it gives me a sense of progress without needing explanation. In the courses section here, the card animations are smooth and the content opens in pieces that feel easy to follow. Even small touches like emoji or illustrations help keep it from feeling too formal or too heavy. Then we're going to try the emotional wellness quiz next. The result appears almost immediately. It's straightforward, but still feels personal enough to me to actually feel useful. And what really stands out, though, is the moment we press play on a soundscape while scrolling through reframing tools. Now, that combination makes the whole thing feel less like using an app and more like stepping into a mental space. At this point, nothing feels unfinished or disconnected, and that's great. Each feature responds smoothly, and the mobile layout supports what the app is trying to do without calling too much attention to itself. It's a strong foundation to build on. So moving forward, keep in mind that not every emotion needs a solution, but sometimes it helps to slow down and look what's behind it. This part of the app gives users space to do exactly that. No pressure to fix anything. Just simple tools that guide them through the process of rethinking a thought or a reaction. To generate this section, we'll give the AI this prompt. Add a tool section with cognitive reframing techniques. Each tool indicates and includes a question to reflect on and guidance for adjusting thoughts. Let users mark tools as used or helpful. And Rourke responds with a scrollable set of guided tools. Each one starts with a reflection question like, why did I feel overwhelmed today? Followed by strategies that helps our users reframe their thoughts. Now these include things like relabeling, journaling prompts, or targeted mindset shifts. Each card can be swiped through and users have the option to mark tools as used or helpful. This adds a layer of personalization later on as the app starts to recognize which techniques resonate most with each of our users. 
A simple star rating system and timestamps are also included to track how often a tool is used, giving users a sense of progress and helping the app surface the most effective techniques over time. After a user works through a reflection or a reframing exercise, there's often a need for something quieter, a way to settle the mind without more input. And that's where sound makes a difference. Instead of another feature to interact with, this one simply just plays in the background, creating space for focus, calm, or rest without breaking the flow of the app. Here's how we prompt it to build this feature. Create a soundscape player for background audio tracks, focus, calm, sleep. Show buttons to play and pause and track descriptions. Include looping and volume control. All right, so here, Rourke builds a clean audio player with three ambient tracks, Focus Flow, Gentle Rain, and Deep Sleep. Each one includes a short description, like ideal for working on tasks or designed to help you wind down, so our users can choose based on mood or need. Playback controls, of course, are minimal, but they are complete play, pause, volume, and loop toggle for uninterrupted listening. There's also a subtle animation on the player to show that something's actively running without, you know, being completely distracting. Now, one detail worth noting, the audio keeps playing even when the screen is locked. That's especially useful for users who rely on background sound while sleeping or meditating, like myself. Now that our users have had time to reflect, to listen, and to settle, the next step is giving them structure, something they can follow without feeling overwhelmed. The goal here isn't productivity for the sake of it, but a steady path forward. And this feature helps turn all of the self-awareness they've built into simple guided actions they can actually stick with. So we're gonna ask the AI to build this next part create a personalized goal setting flow. Ask users to choose one of three goals, for example, better sleep, emotional balance, self-confidence. Based on their quiz results, generate a suggested seven day action plan with small daily tasks. All right, so now we have a clean goal setting flow. After our users finish the wellness quiz, they can choose one area they wanna work on. Based on that choice, the app creates a seven day plan made up of small targeted tasks. Now these include things like write down three things you're grateful for, or avoid screens for one hour before bed. Only one task is revealed each day, helping users really focus on what's immediately in front of them. Once a task is complete, they can check it off and reflect briefly if they want to. Also, the system tracks streaks to keep momentum going and encourages consistency without adding too much pressure. And because Rourke makes it easy to share app prototypes at any stage, developers can quickly gather feedback on evolving features like personalized plans and then refine the experience before the final release. There's also a reset option, which lets users start a new seven day cycle or switch goals entirely without losing their past progress. And this helps make the experience feel flexible and more personal. So all of this from mood entries to daily tasks needs to be stored in a way that feels seamless to the user, but solid on the back end. And to make that happen, we're going to connect everything to Supabase so that our app can handle real time updates, secure logins and save progress without any extra setup from our user. So to get all that set up, we're going to use this single prompt. Connect Supabase for storing user profiles, quiz results, mood tracking entries and save techniques. Include authentication, email slash password, sign up and login. Now Roar connects to Supabase in the background to handle all of that backend data. It securely stores user credentials and keeps real time records of mood history, quiz results, save tools, completed lessons and tracked habits. The authentication flow includes email and password registration, login, and persistent sessions too, so that our users don't lose their progress even if they close the app. Any changes to user state are reflected instantly within the interface. What's really impressive is that all of this complex backend functionality is handled simply through natural language prompts, removing the need for manual coding or setup. For development and testing, Superbase Studio provides a built-in dashboard where we can monitor user data, review stored entries, and debug when needed. 
API keys and the full database schema only need to be passed to Rourke once, and from there, syncing is automatic. Now, there seems to be a small session validation issue, but again, Rourke flags it immediately on its own and resolves it using one of its built-in fixes. So with everything built and connected, it's time to see how it actually feels in action. I'm going to launch the full app preview using the QR code Rourke generates. Now, once scanned in Expo Go, the app opens right away to a welcome screen with soft colors and a clean layout. There's no clutter, just a clear starting point. I'll tap through each feature to see how it holds up on a real device. And in the mood tracker, I'm going to be able to select a mood using the emoji picker and add a custom label to it. Once submitted, the entry appears instantly and updates the graph to show emotional patterns over time. The layout feels clean and flipping through past entries is simple. Next, I'm going to head over to the psychology course section. The cards are scrollable and illustrated, each with a unique title. When I tap read more, the content expands into a full screen lesson broken into short readable chunks that are easy to follow. Now I'm going to take the quiz. After entering age and gender, I'll rate five quick questions using an emoji style scale. The results are generated immediately and show a summary like mild stress along with a bit of guidance. And it's actually kind of correct. Now that outcome is saved to the user profile automatically and I'll test the reframing tools for myself. Each one starts with a reflection prompt and some advice and I'm going to mark a few as used or helpful and then watch the data sync in real time. It's smooth and doesn't interrupt the flow at all. Moving into the soundscape player now, I'm going to switch between tracks, I'm going to adjust the volume, and I'm going to leave one running in the background. Thankfully, audio keeps playing even while I move through other features, which does make the app feel more immersive without needing too much extra attention. Next, I'll open the personalized development plan. Now the seven day checklist is active with one task available at a time. After completing a task, I'm going to mark it done and watch the streak tracking update quietly in the background. Everything looks really good. All right, so now I'm going to simulate the app store publishing process using test data. I know a lot of you have been asking for this in the comments. So inside Rourke, I'm going to walk through each step of the publishing flow. This gives a full picture of how the app could move from prototype to an installable iOS preview, all without leaving the build environment. Now, one standout feature is that Rourke is the only platform that lets you easily share your app with friends before it's officially published, so you don't have to wait for App Store approval to get feedback or to share your work. And that wraps up the full build. Every feature in this app, from mood tracking and quizzes to personalized plans and soundscapes, it was all created using Rourke. There was no manual coding, no external tools, just a guided flow of AI prompts and real-time feedback all managed inside one platform. You can take the same approach and apply it to any space, whether that's mental wellness, productivity, education, or something completely new. And if this walkthrough helped you map out your own build, please use these same prompt flows and make them your own. And when you're ready, you'll know exactly how to test, how to refine, and how to publish it. Please drop a comment below if you're building something similar. I always love hearing what you guys are doing with it. I'd love to hear what you're working on next. I'll see you with the next one, and thank you for spending your time with me today.